No, this is good. Alright, ready? Three, two, one. Peso, please. <clears throat> oh, yeah, see, we can just cut all this part out. <laughs> <laughs> see, we're good, we're good. I can't even imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine doing this and not editing it. <laughs> That's fine. Peso, please. It's obvious. Featuring the garden baddie herself, my girlfriend, Drea. <laughs> Alright, so please tell us about who is the garden baddie. What is the garden baddie that you are? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the garden baddie was just an idea I had to kind of make gardening more normalized. I thought maybe it would make people like see it as a more like i don't know like accepted thing like because yeah. it seems so foreign to people that mm. i thought like if i could make it look fun and like right. sexy and like it's not all gross and dirty <laughs> that people would like be more open to it especially <laughs> women and so like mm. when i say baddie i just i feel like baddie just means like you're like a girl who might have like taken time to like reach her full potential mm -hmm. and like when she did she was like amazing and she's right. a baddie and taking she control just took control of her life right. and uh, mm -hmm. is now like living her best life so. following her passions following so, her dreams right yeah and for me I think I'll like say like oh I'm a baddie whatever but I see that as being like a person who's like confident who mm -hmm. believes in themselves like I look at it as someone who's like who believes in themselves and might have had a hard time believing in themselves at one point but right. now is coming to the realization that she can do anything she wants mm -hmm. so like garden obviously i love plants i'm so into gardening whatever and batty for that reason so that's why i chose that name mm -hmm. it was between that and the garden babe but i think batty just has like more of like a better ring to it and it also just like embodies what i've kind of been through right so. growing and yeah growing as a person so much overcoming growing challenges and just becoming a better better person because of it mm -hmm. and just you know owning it just yeah. owning who you are mm -hmm. and owning those challenges and be yeah. trying to be the best version that you can possibly be exactly because i used to have a horrible view of like who i was mm -hmm. like people would make fun of me like you're too tall you wear glasses like you're so ugly like and I was like, like I thought I was disgusting. I thought oh I was like so ugly. And then it's like you grow up and you're like, I have to live with myself the rest of my life. Like, yeah. why would I choose to be unhappy? True. Like, you want to be the, you want to be your own best friend. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm the only. Did I just move that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, you want to be your own best friend. You want to treat yourself as if you would treat a best friend. Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't judge them. Like, you would encourage them. Yeah, and it's super hard to get to that spot. Like, obviously, I'm not 100% there. I don't know if I'll ever be 100% there, but, like, it's a process. And I'm so much better off than I was when I was in, like, middle school and high school. I just learned um, a lot, and a lot of that's definitely because of you, too. Wow. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Even the whole gardening part, I feel like, I just remember there was a day where I was like, I don't have a passion, like, mm. I went to school for environmental science, and, like, I love it, but, like, I don't know if I would want to do that the rest of my life, because yeah. I don't see myself, like, doing one thing forever. And he was like, but what about, like, plants? What about gardening? Like, you could totally make a career out of that. Mm. And I was like... I never even thought about that, <laughs> like, and it just clicked, and ever since I just kind of ran with it, and I don't even know if you knew that or not, but there was you a kinda, defining yeah. moment, I uh, remember, I don't know where it was, but I don't know, yeah. you literally said that to me, and I was like, uh, shit, Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, because, like, what people don't <laughs> realize is, like, you, you don't have to have everything figured out, you don't have to have your whole roadmap figured out, you, you start by looking at 
what do you like? What do, what do you like the most? What do you enjoy yeah. doing? You know? These days, you can literally do anything. For real. And it's crazy, like, I, like, I don't know, like, the whole, like, making a living off of the internet, like, off of YouTube and TikTok and whatever, like, I yeah. would get so excited, but then I'd be like, <laughs> shit, like, I don't have what it takes, like, I hate myself, I hate how I look, I hate how I sound, I feel like no one's ever gonna like what I'm doing, but then, like, like, you can't give up, like, because people are gonna like what you're doing, yeah. no matter what it is, I feel Seriously. like, as long as you love what you're doing, and I've mm -hmm. noticed that, because I stopped posting TikToks for a long time, Yeah. and now I've been doing, like, more garden-focused ones, right. because I feel like that's my niche or niche or whatever. Yeah, And um, so you're obsessive about it. Yeah, like, my second post is already almost at, like, over 200 likes, and I'm like, yeah. like, that's a... That's a good amount of people. Yeah, like, it really I always is. said to Obvious, like, if you're in a room and you have to speak in front of other oh, people, that's that's a lot of it people. It is. People don't realize that. Like, like it's people all like, oh, 200 likes, like that's nothing yeah. for TikTok. But like, imagine you actually talking in front of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, that'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, or yeah, being upset about like 500 views or even a thousand views. It's like, can you imagine spe speaking 500 people? That's like. A whole class of like high schoolers or something like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. Not more. And then a thousand is like maybe like your whole school is literally there and you're speaking in front of them about what you yeah. love. Yeah, you know, exactly. things you're passionate about and, and they actually love it. Yeah, and like I want to say to you, like, congrats on over 200,000. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and also, um, almost 4,000 followers on Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, already is. It's over four thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, like a thousand. Over four thousand. Yeah, yeah. What's it at? Uh, it was like four thousand fifty-five. Wow. Or something like that. And I don't want to act like followers are like mm, the yeah. only thing, but like to see someone like you working <laughs> so hard, like twenty-four-seven, yeah, yeah, yeah. you never take a day off. In no, your I life. don't. Like it feels like it's finally clicking. It's I know. Finally happening. Like. And shout out Billy Carson. Shout out Billy Carson. He posted a video and yeah. like, they had a podcast together and it's just been doing great. And yeah. it's just so awesome to see what you getting what you deserve I know. finally. Yeah. yeah, it's just like always having this vision and then like finally seeing like the results mm -hmm. of like just persistence and straight dedication. It's like crazy. Like Yeah. Like I don't know. Persistence is a hundred percent key. Mm -hmm. Like consistency, and yeah, anyone can get there if you just follow those things. Anyone, like literally, just following your heart. Fo that's that's the key. Like literally, it's not even just following your heart. I feel like you need to have that consistency. True. Well, that's true. That like, for, if you want to make it on, like, like having your own like online stuff, like the YouTube, the TikTok, yeah. the Instagram, like. You do need to be super consistent, like, mm -hmm. like, or else yeah. people just don't catch on. Yeah. And that's one thing mm -hmm. that you have that no one else that I personally <laughs> know has it in them to constantly <laughs> be consistent and, like, you, it's showing that you have what it uh, takes, you know? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I always, like, I love, like, perspective is my favorite thing, right? And honestly, I love Gary, yeah. Yeah, I was just telling her the other day, because we were watching Dawson's Creek, and it's just like, when uh, the certain relationship, Dawson's mom and dad, they get to get back together again just because of perspective of like losing each other I always do like I would just add a pinch of perspective I always just do that <laughs> and it changes everything it yeah, literally perspective changes everything but the thing I was like trying to say is Gary Vee, he, he once posted this he once posted this like kind of meme like this little graphic more like a graphic of this this guy he's digging underground and he's looking for a diamond right and uh, the guy, the miner, turns around right before reaching the diamond, and the the whole the whole message of the post is like never, never give up stop. because you never know you could be how a second close before you, you are. Pop off, literally, you know? literally, you never know. Like your next thing that you might do might blow up. Like literally, it could be anything. Especially on TikTok, like people. Especially on a TikTok. A lot of people my age, like undermine TikTok. They're like, oh, like that's True. for children. But Still. like, no, that could change your freaking life. <laughs> yeah. 
And like, mm -hmm. that's what's so great about it. And I, I feel like we're so lucky to be the kind of people to give that a chance. I know. I don't want to be working a job I hate for the rest of my right. life. Like, I want to make it online where I can work from wherever. Like, it's that's, I feel like that's a lot of people's goals, but a lot of people don't see it. But like, knowing this guy, like, <laughs> I see anything's possible. Aww. I'm so lucky for that. Uh, thank because you. Because it's constant motivation to get <clears throat> off my freaking ass. I mean, do something, <laughs> be persistent and consistent, and anything's possible. Yeah, seriously. I mean, you look at anyone, you look at anyone, everyone has their own unique story. And, for me, that's just like one of the most inspiring things. Just like knowing that anything is possible. Like anything. Like you, you look at some of the biggest people and they own have their own thing. Like it's just like wow. Like the fact that that happened made them so big. Yeah. It's like you never really know what yeah. can bring you to that next yeah, level. And I, yeah, and I was just watching this TikTok that was like, oh, like strangers are more likely to like mm. oh, give yeah. you support because they don't know you they didn't grow up with you like yeah. it's but the people you know best are the ones to last mm. support you because they can't even fathom someone's so. dreams coming yeah. true yeah because so many people's dreams are just like yeah. left in the dust yeah so yeah i think so many so people sad. Can to that yeah because a lot of people a lot I, i've seen this so much and um <laughs> But yeah, I, I've seen so many people where it's just like, oh, what crap, what were we... Uh, like the strangers supporting. Oh yeah, strangers or... supporting. Um, yeah, just so many people will just feel like, you know, the people that they know best are not the ones that are like supporting them, like, you know, sharing their posts. Right, know, and it's, commenting. it really is just a societal it's, thing. It's like, I feel like you can't even take it personally. You it's, can't. Because it happens mm -hmm. with everyone, I feel mm -hmm. like. Because, yeah, a lot of people that know, like, your whole past, like, who have been, like, who have who have known you for a while, they already have a conception of who, who you, you are. are. Yeah. No one thinks that Johnny down the block is going to freaking make mm -hmm. it to 100 million subscribers on YouTube, but yeah. you never know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because people love to underestimate other people. People love to underestimate people. And that's, uh... That's society yeah but that that's the whole thing really that's it's just there's so much abundance there's so so much can happen as long as you can just open yourself to the possibilities and mm -hmm. feel worthy that these things can happen then and you consistently hold that in your mind's eye your vision you feel it in your all your cells your trillions yeah, of cells yeah one thing that everyone needs like I don't even think this would be possible if you don't remind yourself constantly. Mm -hmm. If you don't take steps to constantly have these little things reminding you of your goal, you're gonna get off track. And like, like you, you have like <laughs> post-it yeah. notes everywhere. Post-it notes everywhere. Yeah, post, what are those things called? The, note cards. My note, note card, cards yeah, pocket, my goal reminders card. Reminders on your phone, Mine's you have a phone. calendar, which you don't Cal really use anymore. I use that calendar, I have another calendar yeah, on my phone. <laughs> all these apps yeah. to help you organize and remind you of mm -hmm. things constantly. Like Constant that's reminders. definitely something, like for someone like me where it's not natural to just be motivated all the time, mm -hmm. like you need that to you need it like seriously be successful see that's the thing i feel like one of the most important things is like is motivation like so many people like i see this problem mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. people are having this problem of how do i stay motivated that's the thing that people have the because most because it's so problem. easy to get not unmotivated yeah. because work's putting you down you're tired you're mm -hmm. working all day people have kids, you gotta make your food, like, yeah. there's so much going on, so there much. is, it feels like there's not enough time in the day if you have a full-time job to yeah. stay motivated, but if you do stay motivated for those, like, couple years or whatever, mm -hmm. like, it'll pay off, and, like, mm -hmm. you just have mm -hmm. to sacrifice your sleep or whatever it takes, mm -hmm. like, to get there. See, that's the thing, like, people don't realize, like, it's actually quite amazing, like, so some of the biggest like results that I, I started like getting is like right around the time I started heavily focusing on my affirmations and you guys don't even no one I don't oh. think you even know like how affirm how many affirmations I do daily like yeah. over a hundred every single day 
Like, do over 100 every single day. Do you listen to them every day, or do you just do it in your head every day? See, that's the day? thing. I do it in all kinds of varieties. But do you <laughs> listen to them every day? Yeah, I, I also listen to them every single day. I have a routine. Basically, I mean, I even started, remember, I started brushing with my brushing my teeth with my left because oh, yeah. it was like, it signified a new change in me. And I've been doing it every yeah, day. and this is just like... It's a small thing, but... Like, sometimes I wonder if you were just born with this, like, amazing, like, motivation <laughs> and, like, need to be challenged constantly, or if, or if you actually just, wor like, I don't know, like... That's funny. Because, obviously, if you work towards, like, that mindset, like, yeah. you'll get to that mindset yeah. where you always want to be challenged and motivated, mm -hmm. whatever, but it's, like, you're just always doing stuff that surprises me and, like... Even the simplest thing, like brushing your, like he's righty and he brushes his teeth. With his <laughs> yeah, 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 like as many. I don't know. It's funny. Gary V is definitely someone who like inspires me. Yeah. Inspire. I don't watch his videos like that as much, much at all anymore. To. I used to watch his videos. But I think every that's because you kind of gathered what he's yeah, all about, and you're like, I, got I it. get it. Yeah, I get it, and I feel like we all, honestly, we might. I think we all like go through phases of like people who we consume. And they teach us valuable lessons in life because everyone's a teacher. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, persistence is just mm -hmm. just like and seeing Gary Vee's like hype energy all the time. Yeah, like, he never misses a beat. No, he's no, always on no. like and I just, full speed. Yeah, and I resonated so much. Guess what? We had the same birthday, November fourteenth. Oh, too. Well, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, Scorpios, and apparently and Scorpios are really like passionate and like I feel that. Yeah. I felt that from like Gary Vee so much, yep. but but that's the th yeah, that's the thing. Very passionate. That's one lesson that I really really was great for me to see like someone like that because if there wasn't someone like Gary Vee you know I feel like I would have had the same kind of I still feel like I would have had the same kind of motivation and dedication mm -hmm. but it helped me because it I always like there's times I just think of him and it reminds me you know mm -hmm. but whatever I'm, I'm sidetracking no, <clears> the thing okay. is the amount of affirmations I do is insane it's like wake up mm -hmm. start start visualizing Start visualizing my ultimate future, ultimate future, and start feeling gratitude for it. I do this every single morning. Mm. Even if I'm not, like, laying down in the proper pose, meditating, like, if I'm laying on my side, I'll still try to, like, still try to think about it, even if it's just for a little bit, even if I end up falling asleep. I still make sure to get that in every single morning, because when you wake up, you're in the theta hertz, so, and that's, that's how you're tapping into our nervous system. Mm -hmm. But... The thing is, the more affirmations you do is the more you implant it into your subconscious. Mm -hmm. And subconscious is the most important thing because why? What, what we're operating through daily life is subconscious and we don't even yeah, realize most of it. our life I feel like it's just subconscious stuff. It like is. Being ingrained into yeah. your brain. And the thoughts that we get is a part of our subconscious. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, well, let's take control of our subconscious. Let's mm -hmm. give it these positive things, these these things that are going to make us feel the ultimate best. Like, what is that? Like, if you don't know, write it down, make a list, <clears throat> because that's number one in finding what's going to drive you. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're so lucky <clears throat> to have, like gotten past like depression and like yeah. to actually like realize that you deserve to be happy and that yeah. you want to be happy yeah, and that it's... because like like it's just so crazy from someone who like obviously deals with mental illness like every single day like to like see someone who like truly wants to be happy and like is fighting <laughs> to be happy like mm -hmm. that's just really inspiring and like it's also crazy to me that like you <laughs> just can like that you can do that and like it's amazing because like I feel like a lot of people who like deal with depression or like I have OCD like it's hard for me to always want to be happy yeah. like because I'll just be feeling down on myself or like super anxious or like just wanting to go to sleep <laughs> like mm. so that I don't have to deal with my brain mm. um and it's just great to see <laughs> like I don't know. I'm losing my point here. You have to fight for your happiness. That's that's yeah, the ultimate thing. That's my point. Because 
I've been there. Like, trust me, I had suicidal thoughts. Like, because being sad, it was like it was like a comfortable place to be in, and it's like it's just easier, it's easier. because it's easier. there's so much more to be sad about. Like, yeah. if you let it, mm -hmm. like, but. And also, I think society is definitely driven towards like, oh, everything, like this world's so fucked up, like there's so much shit yeah, going on. Seriously. But like in reality, like if you just like were to drive out into the woods, not watch the news, Simple. not listen to a single person, like yeah. do your own thing, like you would not be stressed out, mm. you would not be anxious, like you would be at peace. I feel like and like. When I think about that, it's like, that's, like, the only thing that's going crazy in this world is, like, the media, like, blaring stuff at you, and, like, that's the only reason why we're so, like, stressed out is because we're doing unnatural things, mm -hmm. we're hearing all this crap from the media mm -hmm. that makes you upset, like. Yeah, but, see, the thing is, I think that there's a possibility that you would even feel uncomfortable going into nature and being alone because we're well, also very much in we have this ingrained things in us well yeah um, yeah definitely but no i know totally i know what you i know what you're saying mm -hmm. and i think uh, like the more well you yeah it's ingrained in us to like be like what's going on in the world like what should i be stressed out about yeah day? Like, exactly the news it's yeah, literally there for saying, you yeah i'm just saying like every day if it was like the natural world like we would not be this stressed out no. at all, and we would not be hating ourselves this mm -hmm. much, and we wouldn't be like having this sad perspective on everything. Yeah, it's like so many. I feel like so many people just through life like were made it funny how like saying something negative or even hateful. Like I don't know, like even people like messing around like as friends, like saying "Oh fuck you," like I don't know something with me. Like I, I, I just. Didn't that's even so like to joke around like that. like with that yeah. like saying fuck no, you to that's friends, just joking so around. Weird that you said yeah, that. because I remember there was a point in my life where I was that's like, all alone. <laughs> <laughs> like just like I don't want to say fuck you. <laughs> like I love you. <laughs> that's so amazing though because you are like one in a million. And like, <laughs> um, but that's really funny that you said that because there was a point in my life where I was like. And this was definitely the OCD talking, like, because yeah, I've had okay. OCD forever. And, like, there was just this point in time where, like, like, my friend or whatever was saying, like, oh my god, like, I wish I would just die. Like, it was, like, joking, like, oh, just kill me or god, just, just shoot me, just kill me, I whatever. Can. And I was, like... I was always so terrified to say that. <laughs> I and know, my, same. That's my OCD, 100%, because I was like, if I say that, it's going to happen <laughs> to me. And, like, obviously that's not true. Well, yeah, like, I'm just like, so oh. hype about this because it's awesome to just be able to, like, I'm just so glad that I met you. Like, yeah, it's straight too. on my soul, mate. Like, really, it's crazy how we feel so, so similar about so many things like this. Yeah. Just see, it's, I feel like it's such a, like, I mean, it's such a small thing, like, saying no, stuff but like that. Th but it's it, just small things like that yeah. that matter so much because, like, I feel like you don't meet a lot of people who think the same way that you do. Mm -hmm. At least I haven't. And, like, you're the probably <laughs> the only one who thinks a lot of the same things yeah. that I do. I and know. the fact that you, like, weren't into saying those things and like I wasn't either that's yeah. kind of funny like although mine was more of like like a mental well, issue but like I I at mean at the same still. time like you like yeah like you don't want to be saying those things yeah like, obviously like you want to be happy to live you don't want to use those phrases like throw them around like they mean nothing mm. because that's not healthy right right so, and I I don't know, even if, even at the point where I didn't know so much about the law of attraction, it's just, it just, something felt so wrong. Even though, like, I was depressed for a long, like, a good portion of my life, like, even, even during those, like, stages, I still didn't like to say the phrases like that, because, mm -hmm. I don't know, something you, about it's it. It's funny, just, you just, like, knew yes. that you yeah. didn't want to be saying that. Yeah, I, like, t true, I was, I was stuck in a lot of low energy low energetic emotions but still it was like 
Like, so those certain phrases, I feel like, you know, are, I don't know, it's like easily said and yeah, it's fun. Said, they but make like it sound that, like it's fun and funny. If those things actually happened, funny. it would be totally devastating oh, yeah, to yeah. so many people. Right, right, right. But, um, yeah, pretty much. Um, the, th the thing is, you, all of these things are having an uh, impact on your subconscious. And mm -hmm. your subconscious runs who you are. So, affirmations, like, I can't stress this enough and it's... It's, uh, I feel like a lot of people kind of brush it off, and mm -hmm. but when they don't, I love it because it's really transformative. And I was just thinking about this today, like, the thing is, you always just have to try to bring yourself into these states where of pure bliss, and it's hard. It takes work. You can't always get there, and I, I, mm -hmm. for me, yeah, I'm not always there, but it's like, you have to put yourself in these states because, so that becomes the new norm, mm -hmm. so that when you are living your best reality, it's, it becomes a norm, and you're getting to that norm mm -hmm. by having that that big jump in emotions of high vibration mm -hmm. yeah. and gratitude and so you have to get used to that you have to make your body feel used to that because emotions are stored in your body and once you realize that you realize that you, you want gratitude going through all trillions of your cells because they, they communicate faster than speed of light and you know if if that's true and it's uh, if that's communicating faster than the speed of light and being a receiver into the quantum field, then you know something, something crazy will happen. Some, a miracle will happen. It will happen. Things will blow your mind for the best. Like synchronicities <laughs> will happen. Well, you know what? Let's let's go back into the garden. So okay. Go back. Yeah. To. So we have the garden baddie here today, <laughs> and she recently, kind of recently, I guess you could say, past few years, years. <laughs> gotten really interested and really passionate about gardening and why that's so important. Why is gardening so important? I think that gardening is so important because I feel like I have an anxious worrywart nature and as much as I'm trying to like move more away from that into mm -hmm. more of like a peaceful nature, it's made me realize that I don't think that it's normal for people to be worried about food security. Yeah. And I think that that has made a huge, like, debut this year. Like, uh, yeah. when Corona first hit, know, all they talked about was, oh, there might be food shortages, yeah. or there's food shortages here. And, like, that was so true. Like, mm. you, I went into the grocery store seeing, like, empty shelves. Yeah, yeah. And that, like, in my mind, like, it was like fight or flight mode. Like, for America to have to worry about food shortages, like, mm -hmm. like we have the ability to go online, mm -hmm. order seeds. They're freaking three yeah. to five dollars for a yeah. thousand seeds. That's true. And most people don't know how to grow their own food. Yeah, crazy. And the fact that that could just be taken away from I know, you at any moment. It's like that's when the news goes on and says food shortages, like that kick started something in me. I was like, I'm buying a bunch of seeds. So wait, hold on. You did see something on the news saying sh food shortage? Yes. Okay, cuz this that... happened so many oh, times word. in 2020. Okay. I didn't see I didn't Yes, cuz you don't watch the news. I don't watch the news. <laughs> so I didn't know but I try not to watch the news, but when this first started happening, it's all my parents were watching. Right. And like, yeah, I was gonna yeah. watch because it's crazy, and like I was. And you're like, with you just want to spend time with them, and that's what, what yeah, they happen. Yeah, and that's what my parents do is watch the news. So. Yeah, because I thought you know I'm just watching <laughs> spiritual videos all day, and like I hear they're saying it, and uh, no, this was like an actual thing. Okay. Food shortages, blah blah blah. Like, people are getting coronavirus. Like, people can't come into work. People like are scared, so they're not going into work, mm -hmm. and so meanwhile, like production slows, which means there's not enough food getting to the shelf mm -hmm. because we rely on everyone else to make sure that there's food. Yeah. Why would I ever rely on someone else for my food? I know. It, that's like it that's seems... the number one thing. Like <laughs> other we need. other than water. Yeah. The only thing that you actually need in your <laughs> life is food. So why would I crazy. rely on the government or whatever yeah, yeah, to give me food? Like, mm. no, I'm going to 
like stock up <laughs> on as many seats yeah. as I can. Yeah. Oh yeah, she did. I can say with no regrets that I've spent like a lot of yeah. money on seeds and not only seeds but stuff that I planted that mm. isn't gonna die like in the winter it's gonna come back every single year Dang. so that I never have to pay for it again that's great and that was something that I had no idea I could do like I thought like oh like I can buy an apple tree and like plant it it'll come back no there's like so many plants that you can buy and it's gonna give you edible awesome. fruit every single year and you never have to pay for it mm -hmm. again yeah and so yeah i just wanted to start my own garden and i did like this yeah. was the year that changed everything for me yeah and it's cool because like not only did it change for her i mean it's like you see people like Emily chapa was like yeah. oh started talking God. about their gardens and he's so like great. talking about <laughs> their like his yield his garden yield and how they're doing it's really cool to see like mm -hmm. no main first of all right he's main very yeah, mainstream rapper yeah who like, turns spiritual and woke and all that yeah and to see people like he's inspiring people to do what's best for themselves yeah, yeah. which is great yeah true and uh yeah like yeah. it's just it's really so important that people learn how to grow their own food like you can do it in the simplest of ways, like whether it's from from an environmental standpoint, like so much better for the environment mm. to grow your own food so that it's not getting shipped in to, from 2,000 miles away. Like that's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. Why should I be like paying six dollars for a little thing of blueberries <laughs> when an I entire know, it's insane. an entire plant costs between fifteen and thirty dollars tops, like. <sighs> That easily, I you, probably you make that money like, back in one summer. Yeah, I spent a lot of money on, on fruit this year. Yeah. Like, so, like probably, like, you know, a lot, okay? Yeah, it's, because I you love fruit, yourself. but you don't have to be spending all this money. Like, that's another thing. Like, it's almost like, like, obviously, like, there are small businesses, and, like, it's great to support small businesses, and... Yeah. Like, I love that. But most of these companies are not small businesses, mm. like, at the grocery store. It's, like, huge businesses, yeah. companies, corporations. And, like, mm -hmm. if you can, just try to buy, like, one plant. And I guarantee when it rewards you, <laughs> it's going to be life-changing, I feel like. Like, if, I don't know. It's just life-changing yeah. to, like plant something and then it rewards you for so many years that's, to come yeah like, it's amazing and it doesn't cost you money like just the seeds like yeah yeah and wait what are you saying you said it doesn't cost you money i'm saying just the seeds it costs well i'm you not money. even talking about that i'm talking about like a blueberry plant you pay 15 dollars you plant right. it that's it that's it you never have to pay for anything and like so for like vegetables and stuff like that, like some vegetables are perennial in our area. We get cold winters, mm -hmm. but most things that you buy, like tomatoes or cucumbers, like that's not going to come back every year. You have to make sure you have enough seeds or like buy seeds every year. Mm -hmm. So that's going to cost you money continuously. But if you buy like certain fruit or vegetables that are perennial in your area, like you never have to pay for it again. So, perennial means that every year it comes back. Yeah, that's every what perennial year it comes means. Back. And for the ones that that don't come back, you need to get the seeds. But yeah. can't you just save the seeds from uh, the ones? That's that, a great question. Can, can you just save the seeds that? So <laughs> this is funny because a lot. I would say most plants that or seed that you buy. If you save the seeds from that, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the plant that you bought when it fruits. Wow. You could get something super small. You can't even get this thing. You no, want. but you can. <laughs> you can. So if you look for the words heirloom or open pollinated, okay. those things, you can save the seeds and most likely you'll get what you planted before. Oh, really? But either way, if you are in a food crisis or like you need food and you can save the seeds like i would recommend mm -hmm. always saving the seeds every yeah, year just in because case, right and just saving it like because if you have the money to buy seeds again next year that's great i would do that but always save the seeds at least some seeds even if it's not heirloom or open mm -hmm. pollinated because even though you won't get like 
a huge tomato or like the same plant that you had before, mm -hmm. you're gonna get something that's most likely like edible and gonna right, give you some kind of nutrition. Right, right. So it's not like it's gonna be un inedible or it's something. Just it's just security. gonna be different. Right. And it might not taste as good because mm -hmm. there's so many like ways that it could turn out. And that's what happens in things that are bred to look a certain way. They they could end up like if you take the seeds from that, it could turn out looking like anything. Mm. But like heirloom is like a lineage of things that all look the same. Okay. And they're gonna end up the same. They all look even the same. if you pick the seeds from that. And okay. like that's actually the most natural food to eat is the heirloom like, ones. Yeah. Okay. Because those haven't been bred to look a certain way, taste a certain way, or whatever. Mm. Oh, okay. So heirloom are just like they're the, the ancient. They're the straight like. species. They're the OGs. OGs. They're the OGs. Yeah, they're the things that nature intended. Okay, but so if they're not heirloom, you wait. You need two other different seeds or something like that. No, 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 no. If they're not heirloom, you don't need like. So you're getting confused with the fruit trees, because uh, with fruit trees, it's recommended that you buy two fruit trees of different species so that they can get pollinated by each other and it increases the size uh, of the fruit. Okay. But with like, like if you buy a packet of like tomato seeds, like you can plant all of them and they can all be from the same species. Mm. You don't need two different species to get the tomato plants that you bought. Okay. Okay. So, and so another question on my mind, and I think that many other people have here is, it's winter. Can we not grow anything because it's snowing outside? So, you can't grow, well, okay, this is a tricky question because I don't know the exact answer okay. to if anything's fruiting right now. I don't think that anything is producing fruit right now. Okay, but you can grow it. But you can grow tons of fruit in this area all the way down to zones like five four or three even like two or one i think like certain nuts and like blueberries can grow into mm -hmm. but like you can plant so much stuff like for example any most kinds of berries like raspberries blackberries blueberries strawberries mm -hmm. elderberries like currants uh, lingonberries, uh -huh. goji berries, like all of those you can plant in your backyard. Okay. You can plant all of it in your backyard. In it's going to come back every single year. Plant it in the spring or the fall. You okay. shouldn't really plant it in winter. But if um, you... But basically what, what I'm saying is that if you have a cold... Like if you live in an area that gets cold winters, mm -hmm. there's plenty of stuff that you can plant that it's not gonna die in the winter. It's those that you named aren't gonna die in the winter. Yeah, they're not gonna die in the winter. Okay. In the spring, you're gonna see them pop up, they're gonna come uh, back every okay. year. It's always gonna come back right where you left it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like pawpaws, um, even some vegetables and herbs like lovage and uh, uh, what's it called, rhubarb. Okay. Um, fruit trees, like every fruit tree you can think of, persimmon, apple, pears, plums, cherries, apricots, nectarines, like, all of that mm. is, peaches, all of that is, like, 100%. Okay. And that was mind-blowing to me when I realized how much I could grow here. Right. Because I used to think, like, oh, we're not in a warm climate, like, I can't grow avocados or oranges <laughs> or whatever. It's like, no, but you can plant literally almost anything else. Mm. <laughs> but so, there's a, still a little dilemma then, I guess. You can't you can't have fruiting things during the winter during the winter but see that's when yeah. i feel like that's when your answer would be something along the lines of that's why that's you why you do grow it and mm -hmm. then you can preserve it and that's can why you have to preserve it and dry fruit yeah like when you do if, have the warm if you have like oh. a cool dry dark area you can preserve like like i heard like someone was saving apples for like up to a few months in her root cellar like and wow. like onions and garlic Amazing. and potatoes like they could last like months in a root cellar without being like processed but um yeah like if you do start to grow stuff like I would recommend definitely preserving it mm. so that you have food for the winter mm -hmm. that's the only drawback of living in an area that gets cold winters is that 
you're gonna have to do extra work because you need to preserve that stuff so that you have food security in the winter. All right, so how does someone get started with gardening if they wanna get into it then? So I would say try to find a local nursery or something that sells like a berry plant because I feel like berries are one of the easiest things to grow. They don't need a lot. Like you can plant it right in the ground. You don't need to like mm -hmm. bring it inside in the winter. Like So I would recommend just like, yeah, like go to a lo local nursery, spend 15 to $30 on like a plant and just watch how it grows and just let it like amaze you because I feel like a lot of people don't know where their food comes from or what it looks like That's or true. the fact that any flower anything that produces fruit gets these amazing flowers and, yeah like, that's I so cool to, to me open my world up with that. yeah like and it's just amazing to see like this thing this plant like giving you food that you need to live and like <laughs> so yeah and then like just plant like I guess the easiest thing would to be like plant herbs in like a well lit window so like that's what everyone says is like start with herbs they're easy to grow like you can use them in your kitchen right away because they're right in the windowsill and it'll definitely help you appreciate plants more and mm -hmm. then <laughs> like you could even start a little thing outside or they have a bunch of like these indoor like grow lights that you can use as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah like just start small and it'll open your eyes and then I feel like you'll want to learn more about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what about composting? How important is composting? <laughs> composting is so important. Um, everyone wastes a ton of food and not everyone, like, I don't know, like, a lot of people will buy produce and then just let it go bad and yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's true. So, that's where composting comes in. Like, if you get started and you, like, have a garden bed outside and like composting is so freaking important because mm. you don't have to spend money on like fertilizers and yeah. whatever and all this synthetic crap like yeah. all you have to do is put your food scraps into the compost bin add some like leaves or dead grass or whatever like everyone has tons of dead leaves mm -hmm. and put it in there and then it's literally going to turn into dirt and that's going to fertilize your entire garden and you didn't even have to pay for anything so that's awesome and um in a compost bin you don't want to put like oil or meat or dairy or anything no like gmo that. products well yeah no gmo i would even go as far to say like no conventionally <laughs> grown things so like only organic right. but that's ideal like obviously yeah. not everyone is buying just organic stuff so like potato peels or like old produce like things that get mold on it yeah. like throw that all in your compost bin and it's great fertilizer for right your plants. it's free you literally yeah. just you're recycling basically mm -hmm. and you're just recycling you're making it like a closed cycle so that nothing goes to waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sustainable living is... It's very sustainable. It, it's honestly yeah. so important. And it is so important. I feel like, like, humans shouldn't even, like, like, why isn't it taught to be sustainable? Why yeah. aren't we sustainable? I feel like we have the responsibility to be sustainable. But you like, gotta do so much research point. just to learn about, like, yeah. how do I be the most sustainable? Yeah, I don't get why you they make it so, so hard. Like, I had to make this my major to learn about I know. this. For you. Like, no, this is something that I think that everyone, like, has a responsibility to do. Like, this isn't mm. something that you just get to, like, brush off your shoulder like no this is it's so a responsibility important. like you live on this should. earth have some respect yeah like I'm, you're on this earth you should be responsible at least yeah, for taking care of this place you live on exactly and i'm not saying that it's anyone's fault that they don't know right. how to do it or they weren't educated to do it because that's obviously the school's mm -hmm. fault yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's true do some research and find out ways how to be more sustainable. I have some tips on my blog too. So. Hey, yes you do. How many blog posts do you have right now? <clears throat> I don't know. I think it's like Four. six. Oh, you have six? Okay. So as we talked about, the, one of the reasons why 
Dark Name became like really came onto your radar, and you kind of mm -hmm. wanted to take it more seriously is because of everything that happened in 2020. Yeah. And so we had we had certain people, certain YouTubers, who would talk about how a s certain event like the Great Conjunction and mm -hmm. having major solar flares would be something that would be occurring around the time of December 21st, 2020, because we had. The, the calendar, the Mayan calendar, there was a difference in eight years, so it was saying that 2020 was the actual year the universe was going to end, but it actually was just a transition into a new age, a new, the Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, right? And so solar flares is a big part of this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And basically, yeah, they, the, uh, there were some YouTubers who would be saying that because of these solar flares, we might have something like a power outage. And so that's why, and that's why supermarkets, supermarkets are gonna have a shortage of food. So <laughs> it was like, oh man, like how long could this last? You know, if there's a solar flare, like we had the Carrington event, which was it basically was an event where a huge solar flare knocked out electrical systems. Literally, things are setting on fire, like you know, flames. Literally. Like craziness, just mm -hmm. straight up communications that were failing completely, like mm -hmm. just blowing up. And so it's like, okay, if we, what if we have another event like this? So we went to gardening. Uh, we got to be prepared, right? We got to be prepared. But mm -hmm. solar flares can also have a very, a very high, uh, an upside, a very, very important upside, which I've seen. I've read articles about especially that one person i made a, a one that one video where i was saying this one woman who is a part of the galactic federation who's basically communicating with extraterrestrials was saying that this kind of event would happen in solar flares would upgrade our dna and our consciousness mm. and nasa actually even stated this year that we're gonna have a lot more solar activity solar flare activity Mm -hmm. In the next two years, in the next two mm -hmm. years, so like a lot more, and they were there was even a picture that was showing like the solar minimum, solar maximum, what it's becoming yeah. is this craziness, as you can see from my music video from Solar Flare, a lot more of that, and I mean, you look at the sun, you look at the sun, and you just you see the the even the mini solar flares that are happening, it's like so trippy and it's plasma straight up plasma that is being hauled just shot mm -hmm. at earth and what plasma is is <clears throat> it's something that affects the electromagnetic field especially the earth right so that's why we see those beautiful lights and when we go to alaska we see a beautiful light but not we're not only just seeing these lights we're not only seeing these lights something is happening that are you talking about aurora, aurora Boreal? yes exactly that's exactly aurora what i'm talking about and i've just done research so that's the plasma from the sun right yes and i've seen that i've even found research that said major events in history have been linked with maximum solar activity mm -hmm. and this i looked up you know scholarly researchers and their articles and they showed all the articles are saying, yes, you know, this is true. There's this one guy who um, stated this. And many people are saying, yes, this is true. Like, there is a link between solar activity, like, from our sun, affecting our consciousness. And it was going to be basically affect. This is... Many of the events, the historic events, so you look at the, take a look at the chart. For the event? Go ahead, sorry. They are, like, revolutions. Like, these are, like, very... Big moments in are history. Are they moments time. that are trying to move people to a better state? Yes, towards a better state. Exactly. Yes, because, because yeah, like, yeah, people are fed up. People are tired. Yeah. They wanna, they wanna actualize how they are. These divine beings. They shouldn't mm -hmm. be under all these restrictions, mm -hmm. right? They shouldn't be under. Right. And that's where we. And that was my theory: is that like the sun is trying. Or, like, if someone's behind, like, how the sun works or, like, whatever, like, 
the sun's trying to send these signals to earth to try mm. to move us forward as a people and as a mm. consciousness and to do what's best for the earth and mm. for us as a whole like i feel like the sun's maybe like trying to help us push forward mm -hmm. you know like through all these revolutions or whatever like to like for the greater good for all of us yeah yes exactly and there is dolores cannon content she she's a quantum hypnotist and basically she has thousands of accounts of with clients and she speaks basically with their oversoul their their subconscious their higher self even and they they gave her this information that you know during the times of around the cold war when things are getting real bad you know there's bombs being built all over the world the earth gave a call out to the universe it gave uh, basically I help percent believe that. yeah because it's alive the earth is alive how, how can people not see this we yeah. have trees all these magnificent things that are it's growing out of the of earth energy like full just like energy. we are like exactly how can you say As that above so thing, below like yeah exactly just like we're full of energy mm -hmm. inside of us yeah the earth is full of energy full. within itself because mm -hmm. we're all part of that and we're all made up mm -hmm. of energy so we're all giving energy to the earth so how can you say that's mm -hmm. not alive like right it is a hundred percent it's alive being. yeah we just make up all the little parts of it i feel like right and even though we are these multiple parts think about a universal consciousness and it's just like the body like just like, I feel the, like body. the easiest way for cells, to realize cells. what we're trying to say is that like, yeah you're yeah. made up of trillions of cells yeah like, they're all doing their own thing mm -hmm. but they all like are part of you yeah and like you are you because of all your cells right. exactly but you think you're one thing but you're not yeah we're basically an earth we're trillions of things our own earth basically exactly. our own planet basically exactly that's what we are mm -hmm. I mean, we're made of stardust, same thing as everything else out in the cosmos. Okay, sliders. So, what is a slider? So, apparently a slider is someone who has basically an influence on electrical systems, like a light or any kind of electric device mm -hmm. when they, they're around it, basically. Right. And whether, like, that person's, like, experiencing, like extreme emotions or like maybe someone's trying to like communicate through that device mm -hmm. like weird stuff starts to happen so mm -hmm. the first time in my life that i ever noticed this was when we were on our, one of our first dates mm -hmm. and we were like walking down the street we were in a city yeah. and like every street light that we passed would blink yeah off and on and like it was just right going crazy it. like every time we would just pass it it would happen yeah and like it wasn't like it was just going down the line like some right. kind of electrical shortage like no like we could stop and talk for like 10 minutes and then as soon as we started on it would start yeah, happening yeah exactly like it was so weird it would blink yeah and ever since we met it's just been happening constantly yeah all the time we'll have random things like that happen yeah and it always has to do with like a street light a street light, a light bulb um Maybe and, even and the, the TV. Yeah, and the thing is, like the light, the street light will literally turn off as we're getting close to it. So it's not like, oh, it's, mo it's motion sensor no, because it's turning on as we get to it. Lights. It's turning off. Right. As it's we pass blinking it. or turning off completely or turning on completely when yeah. we know they're not motion sense lights because we drive past these lights all the all time. time. Right. And we know like it's just not that. And like this doesn't happen like every time we pass a light or something. It's usually when we're experiencing like a super like high elevated emotion like that's usually the only time it happens or even like if I'm experiencing like a low emotion like if I'm super depressed or sad like I feel like like someone who's passed or like a guardian angel is just like telling me like everything's going to be fine because all of a sudden this light just flickers on and it's like mm. oh my god like why am I so upset? Like, I'm alive. Like, I should be so happy and yeah. grateful right now. Yeah. That, that, that's what I love, like, with these kinds of events. Because it, like, 
that reminds you like it helps you put things in a perspective <laughs> that you know things are really like beautiful things are really amazing mm -hmm. and miraculous and can blow your mind mm -hmm. and then and then your worries like it helps so, like your worries feel so small so small after that. because you realize how grand everything is yeah, so it's so, so much big bigger and than our problems incredible right yeah because like Many times people just get carried away mm -hmm. in their in their problems and their normal day lives and mm. they just get like so sucked into it mm -hmm. they forget everything that's really out there and they forget that that there's so much unknown mm -hmm. and beautiful people think oh it's just earth and there's nothing more to it it's mm -hmm. boring it's yeah. it's just plain and yeah. oh it's, you know yeah. and my grandmother passed away in September and um ever since like my mom and I are like super like into like signs like are we seeing a sign from her or like is she trying to tell us something or like is she still here with us like whatever mm -hmm. And we both, we've seen white feathers, and white feathers are known to be a sign from people who have passed because mm. they're easy to, like, they're light, like, they're, light. they're easy for energy to manipulate and push around, and, like, whatever, they're, like, easy for them to give you a sign with, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, I went home and my mom was, like, sobbing, yeah. because she had been... Oh, okay, so this is what it was. So she put a picture of me and my grandmother up, mm. and she was talking to her sister about this picture the night before, and she comes out in the morning, and she's looking at the picture, and then she looks down, and- So the camera died. You'll find out the rest of the story when we do another podcast. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can go in the description, and the link will be there for all podcasting platforms. Subscribe to the podcast and more weekly spiritual and conscious videos. So until next time, peace. Oh, please keep your mind at ease. It's obvious.